the supercontinent of Pangaea 215 million years ago, a world of giant amphibians, basal mammals, and early dinosaurs. The single massive continent is a mostly dry and hostile place, yet despite the harsh environment, life is thriving. This is seen best of all with the large herbivores that have taken over the land, the sauropodomorphs. Here in what will one day be Argentina, herds of Riojosaurus dot the land. Though still bipedal and not as large as their Jurassic descendants, these 9 meter dinosaurs are already evolving the signature long necks and tails that allow them to feed on plants no other animal has ever been able to reach. There are other dinosaurs here, such as the 4 meter carnivore, Zubeosaurus. But these thin predators are no threat to the Riojosaurus. The top predators are actually the dinosaurs' distant cousins, the Pseudosuchians, the terrestrial ancestors of modern crocodilians. The Triassic period is their peak, where they rule the land's as top predators, and none are larger than Vasalosuchus. Eight meters long, standing taller than a man, covered in thick armor plating and equipped with dagger-like teeth, Vasalosuchus is the largest non-theropod terrestrial predator ever to walk the earth. Striding across the hot landscape on long, powerful legs, this male is hunting. But he does not have the agility or stamina to go after small, swift prey. His targets are the larger, slower creatures, such as the Riojosaurus. The predator steadily moves around the base of a hill, knowing that a group of the herbivores are not too far away, feasting on the conifer trees. They are close, but not close enough. The carnivore may be capable of high speed, but he can't maintain it for long. And so if he wants to give himself the best chance of success, he has to get closer. But between himself and his prey is mostly open ground, so he has to approach cautiously. The Phasalosuchus bends down till his stomach and tail almost touch the ground, and then he slowly moves forward, doing his best to use the low foliage and large rocks in his way to cover his advance. Meter by meter he moves forward, his joints straining from crawling across the ground for so long. Eventually, he places his body straight behind a rock, just tall enough to obscure his prone form. He then tentatively raises his head, up to get a look at the herd. Only the top of his head and his eyes peer over the rock, and he can see clearly that the herbivores are none the wiser. Too busy lifting their heads into the trees, or lowering them into the small creek to drink, using their forelimbs to brace themselves. The Vasalosuchus lowers his head, and takes three deep breaths. It was time. Rising to his full height, the male moves around the rock and accelerates, his legs carrying him forward from a jog to a full gallop. The Ryujasaurus drinking at the creek see the huge predator moving at them, building up to full speed. Each one rises onto their back legs, turns around, and starts to run, though their max speed is frustratingly slow. Other members of the herd see the fleeing individuals, and only half-heartedly take notice. That is until they see the bounding hulk of muscle and armor that is the Phasalosuchus, now built up to full speed. That is all it takes to make the feeding Ryojosaurus turn and move as fast as they can. The hunter crosses the creek, not slowing down, and closes in on the sluggish herbivores. Fitter or faster members of the herd push slower individuals out of their way, leaving the Phasalosuchus an easier task of picking out the weak links. He targets an old male that is beginning to lag behind the rest of the group, and moves to its rear. Starting to run out of stamina, the Phasalosuchus had to end this hunt quickly. Now right behind his target, the predator reached up and bit into the Ryojosaurus' tail, and then pulled down, nearly drawing his head to the ground. The Ryojosaurus was pulled backwards and downwards, causing him to lose his footing and trip. He hit the ground sideways but didn't stop, instead rolling over, almost landing back on his feet. He tried to right himself, but the predator had let go of his tail, and moved to deliver a more serious attack. The herbivore had just gotten up when the Phasalosuchus launched itself from the side, clamping its jaws around the base of the victim's neck, but he overdid the attack. The Ryujosaurus rolled again, and the Phasalosuchus rolled with him, toppling over each other, till the herbivore landed flat on his side, and the carnivore ended up on his back. Stunned and injured by the predator's bite, the Ryujosaurus struggled to get up again, 
and couldn't do anything to stop the Fasalasuchus from rolling back onto his feet and ending the hunt. The huge carnivore's jaws crunched down on the sauropodomorph's neck. The teeth cut through its flesh and vital organs, but it was the power of the jaws themselves that broke the target's bones. The Ryugisaurus struggled, drew in its last breath, and went limp. The male Fasalasuchus shook himself and breathed deep, trying to catch his breath while also scanning the areas for threats. Even though at his size, the only thing that could threaten him was another male Fasalasuchus. When he had recovered, he moved onto the corpse underside, going for the base of the tail. Though he is capable of feeding on every part of this carcass, he first prioritizes the strong muscles of the hips and legs, as these contain more nutritious meat. He'll fill up on these first before resting and returning to the body until it is devoured or rots. For huge terrestrial Pseudosuchians like Fasalasuchus, the Triassic is when they thrived, and often only had competition with each other. But this is all about the change. The end of the Triassic will culminate in a mass extinction that will hit many animal groups hard, even these mighty reptiles, paving the way for a new family to rise. The Dinosaurs. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down possibly the largest quadrupedal carnivore to have ever lived, Fossolosuchus. Fossolosuchus's first remains were discovered in 1981 in Argentina, dating back to the late Triassic between 220 and 213 million years ago. Though only a few parts of the skeleton have been discovered, the parts we do have include pieces of the skull, various vertebra, femur, fibula, and radius. This is enough to show that Fossolosuchus was a member of the Pseudosuchians, a large family that includes today's living crocodilians. More specifically, Fossolosuchus belonged to the Rawasuchians, a group of mostly large terrestrial carnivores that include the more famous Postosuchus. These were the top predators of the late Triassic, with both bipedal and quadrupedal members, but Fasalosuchus was the largest of them all. Though the limited remains do reduce the accuracy which we can calculate its size, Fasalosuchus is estimated to have grown to between 8 and 10 meters long, with the skull alone being 1.3 meters long. It stood 2 meters tall and weighed up to 3 tons, with high estimates putting it at 4 tons. These statistics make Fasalosuchus the largest non-theropod terrestrial carnivore to walk the earth. Some other terrestrial Pseudosuchians do come close, such as Barinosuchus, but a lot of these species are known from even more fragmentary remains than Fasalosuchus. Hopefully more fossils for this entire family will be found, to give us a better understanding of them. Just to put into perspective how big Fasalosuchus was in terms of mass, it outweighed most carnivorous dinosaurs. Allosaurus from the late Jurassic was a similar length, but even its largest species only got around the two-ton mark. Baryonyx from the early Cretaceous was also similar in length, but it isn't even believed to have reached two tons. You have to get to some really large genuses, like Gorgosaurus and Despletosaurus from the late Cretaceous, that got to between three and four tons to really see how heavy it was. This is of course because theropods were usually more lightly built than the Rawasukians were, which were more heavily built, with thick scales and armoured backs. Unlike other members of its family however, Fasalosuchus only had one row of osteoderms that ran along its back, where most other species had two or more. It did however, have a hypospine, hypantrum articulation, which in simple terms made its back very rigid, which would have given the animal tremendous strength. This strength was focused on its massive jaws, which were long and tall, lined with dagger-like teeth perfect for cutting through flesh. These would have been able to deliver devastating attacks to prey, but what was it hunting? As said before, Fasalosuchus was a terrestrial predator, and it held its strong legs erect beneath its body, allowing it to run like any other quadrupedal carnivore. However, it likely didn't have a high run speed, nor could it keep it up for very long. Scientists believe that it wasn't running up the small agile prey, instead it went up the large, slow animals that it could run down and overpower. 
It's thought to have hunted the sauropodomorphs and sauropods such as Lesimiosaurus and Riojasaurus, both of which were large but slow. And though they may be able to have put up a fight, they may have been the main food source of Phacelosuchus. Of course, it could have also been a generalist. Being at the top of the food chain, no other predators would have been able to challenge an adult Phacelosuchus, meaning they only had to watch out for each other. This lack of predation may have been why it only had one row of osteoderms on its back, losing its armour instead to evolve a more robust back and musculature. A study on the bone microstructure showed that Phacelosuchus had a fast growth rate, which is common in the Rawasukians. A fast growth rate meant that it spent less time being small and vulnerable, and likely meant that they were warm-blooded. On a bit of a side note, Phacelosuchus made an unofficial appearance in the film 65. I say unofficial because this seems to be fan speculation. And I think the filmmakers just wanted a quadrupedal dinosaur, as it barely looks like Phacelosuchus. Anyway, side note over. Phacelosuchus was without a doubt the apex predator of its ecosystem, and the largest of its family. Unfortunately for them, their reign would come to an end not long after Phacelosuchus had risen to the top. The Triassic ended with a mass extinction that wiped out many families of animals, and those Pseudosuchians would survive, their time at the top of the food chain was over, leaving the path for predatory dinosaurs to take their mantle. Phasalosuchus is a testament to the success of the Pseudosuchians, and should be a reminder that the dinosaurs did not rule the Triassic period as they did the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Huge crocodilian ancestors of Phasalosuchus were not uncommon throughout prehistory, and it was their adaptability that helped them survive for hundreds of millions of years. But only Phasalosuchus can stand tall as the largest quadrupedal terrestrial predator. But what do you think of Phasalosuchus? And for my question of the week, do you think the Rawasukians could have continued their dominance if they hadn't been decimated at the end of the Triassic? What lesser known carnivore would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. I like 65. Yeah, I said it. You ever wonder why we only see dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise? It's because you all hate the movies they feature in and studios think prehistory doesn't sell. So yeah, blame yourselves for over-criticizing small films like these that try something new and then fail. Sure would love to see more dinosaurs in varying mediums, but nope, can't have that because everyone's a critic and can't have fun. Also, if you're the type of person that says Jurassic Park 1 is the only good one, you're part of the problem.